Hey guys, this is That Snazzy iPhone Guy here with you today, and this is part two uh, to the guy that, uh, Idiot's Guide to Jailbreaking. Um, so now, on this episode, we're going to look at how to actually jailbreak your iPod Touch or your iPhone. So um, what you do is you launch your web browser, Firefox is the best, and uh, you do a Google search uh, for Ponage Tool 2.2, that's P-W-N-A-G-E-T-O-O-L. Um, 2.2, and uh, it will bring you to this wonderful site, uh, devteamblog, uh, blog.iphone-dev.org, and then the post is the man from Del Monte, he says yes. Okay, so there's a few things we have to go over before you jailbreak. You have to look into the future of what you may be doing. Now, last time we conversed the differences between jailbreaking and unlocking, all right, so if you plan on unlocking your iPhone 3G and using it with another carrier in the future, do not use QuickPone. Okay? There's two applications, QuickPone and Ponage Tool. QuickPone um, just does it right for you. You plug it in as it is, and it does everything. It doesn't touch anything on your phone except for adds the two installers. So it leaves everything the way it is. Um, Ponage Tool totally restores your firmware. So you start from scratch, you have no contacts, you have no music, you have to add all that back on. Okay. Uh, now this is on their site, the golden rule, and listen to this. If you have purchased an iPhone 3G and you want to do a potential soft unlock, if you want to unlock it in the future, do not use QuickPone. And do not use the official IPSW of the iTunes update process without using Ponish Tool. Okay. Uh, read this again and again. Alright, so if you're going to do it in the future, do not use the official ISPW um, and do not use QuickPone. Okay, so now that we've got that cleared, um, on this article you scroll down and, uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, no, we'll just get back to that later. Uh, here we go. Okay, so uh, you download the one you want. Windows only has QuickPone. Sorry guys, so... You might want to find a different computer. You might want to do it with a Mac, all right, um, to do the real Ponage tool. Um, f oh, no, that wouldn't work because Windows formatted iPods. Dang it, guys. You have to do QuickPone. No unlocking in the future if you have Windows. Um, you can download Mac QuickPone or Ponage tool. These are the uh, mirrors. Uh, they say don't use them unless you have to because they're not verified. And uh, here are the official BitTorrents. And uh, I've already downloaded it, so <laughs> I don't need to do that. And then uh, you need to find on the internet the IPSW. Okay. Now, don't use the original Apple one. So you go um, firmware bundle 2.2 IPSW. Okay. And then it, there's a bunch of places you can get it from. Mac users don't know. Let's see. Uh, you can actually download it right from QuickPone's website, the dev team's website. It's somewhere in this article. Where is it? Um, I don't know. But it's somewhere in here. You can find it. And uh, that's that. So once you've downloaded these two things, I stuck them in a folder, you have the Ponage tool and the IPSW. Okay, now the IPSW is a. Uh, let me turn this off. Sorry, guys. The IPSW is the firmware bundle. All right, uh, that's what you use. Uh, that's what you will use to create your modified firmware. So uh, double-click Ponage tool, open it up. Oh, this is where it gets exciting and fun and hackerish. Okay, um, what you guys are gonna do are. Um, you're going to click expert mode, okay? Even though you know nothing about it, uh, click expert mode. Now, a sign pops up. This is free, not for commercial use. If you bought it, uh, demand a refund. It's not for sale. And uh, they state, we are not responsible for any damage this software may do to your equipment. Be warned. Be warned. Be warned. Same thing with me. I'm just showing you how this is how it works for me. If it doesn't work for you and it breaks, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, so up at the top here, there's three buttons. Simple mode, expert, and lock. Expert mode, even though you might not know anything. You click your iPhone, your iPod Touch, or your iPhone 3G. We have the iPhone 3G, so we will be clicking this one. A gigantic check comes up. Don't mistake it. Uh, then you know you selected the right one. Now it's automatically browsing for my IPSW. It should find it, but if it doesn't, I know exactly where it's located. It's in a folder on the desktop. So, 
Um, it usually finds it for you. It takes a second. That's what the little spinning dial is. Let me take this off. That's what the little spinning dial is down there. Uh, it is browsing. And uh, you are Albert Einstein. Okay, there we go. The uh, iPhone 1, comma uh, 2, 2.2. You go ahead and select that. And then you select next. Okay. Then there's a big gigantic list. This is where expert mode comes into play. Click on general. Alright. And then go to the bottom and click continue. Or the blue arrow if I can find it. Sorry guys. Alright. Uh, it says activate the phone. No. Uncheck that. Alright. If you have a 3G, uncheck that right now. They recommend for your partition size, they recommend it be 1000 megabytes. Or somewhere close, 1,700, that's kind of a lot more. But uh, I just did 500 and I'm doing absolutely fine. So uh, this next screen is boot neuter. Uh, it's if you plan on uh, unlocking your phone or if you want to unlock it right now. But uh, it doesn't work on the iPhone 3G, so it doesn't matter. Um, now you get to this part. This is the important part. iTunes is a smart little application. What it does is it knows what Apple's firmware is, okay? It goes, so when you go in and modify this, it goes, hey, wait a minute, that is not Apple's firmware, and it doesn't let you do it. So you have to be sneaky and add a few things in there so it confuses it, all right? Now, these are different packages you download, and uh, what it does is it on iTunes only knows the packages that have been bad, that have been fraudulent. So if you create a new one that's fraudulent and it doesn't know of, it'll still work. And don't worry later, oh, that's one more thing in the FAQ. Someone said, can I still use it in iTunes? Can I still add music, still add movies? Yeah, it acts exactly like it. iTunes does not know you've jailbroken it. So I choose a few of these, download them, you know, add to the queue, and there we go, 100%. And then uh, go to select packages. Download three or four just random ones, select all, and uh, ch chances are it's there's not going to be a firmware that has these exact four things. So uh, then you click continue. Okay, um, this next page it says custom packages settings. Ah, I'm caught. And uh, there's the city installer and the regular installer. Leave those both checked. Okay. We move on to the next page. And uh, this is our boot logo, so when you turn it on, instead of it being an apple, it'll be a pineapple. I love that about this. And um, there's this Steve Jobs guy when you go into recovery logo, or recovery mode. So then you've done it. You click build, and you click continue. And then it creates, uh, it'll say, what's the customized PW? Push save, because iTunes recognizes it. And then it's building this. It takes about 10, 5, 10, 15 minutes sometimes. And... Uh, then once you're done, it shows you how to go into a thing called DFU mode. Um, now this is very important. You have to get into DFU mode properly. You hold buttons down at a certain amount of time and it tells you when to let off. And it puts it in restore mode. Okay, now problem. If you have a late 2008 MacBook, MacBook Pro, or a MacBook Air, sorry, you can't go into DFU mode. So find another computer and then... Uh, restore using another computer. Sorry guys, but that's just how it goes. Apple tried to fool you. Okay, now we're going to force quit this because it'll take 10 minutes and I certainly do not have that. Okay, so force quit. And then on your desktop or wherever you've saved it, you'll have this one, the regular restore, and then you'll have another one just like it called the uh, iPhone. It'll be the exact same except for it'll say under dash custom under dash restore. Okay? Now, um, that is it. That's all the time we have in this segment. Next segment is going to be iTunes. And then the fourth segment will be using your actual phone. So thank you guys. This is that snazzy iPhone guy. And uh, it's been great having you with me. And uh, we're going to go to our last segment. So uh, click on to section three. You're halfway there, guys. Thanks. This is that snazzy iPhone guy. And I'll see you soon.